Hi, hello and uh, welcome to my YouTube channel, KPS Tools and Technologies Tips. Hi, I'm Kamal Singh and today I'm going to show you the whole process of uh, deploying operating system by using SCCM current branch 2002 version, which is the newer version. And there are different steps which we need to follow for uh, deploying that operating system. Uh, as you can see on my screen, these are the different steps which we need to follow. Firstly, we need to create a driver package. <coughs> If you are going to deploy that operating system in uh, uh, virtual environment, then drivers are not really required. But still, I will show you like how you can create driver package and deploy, so that in future also, uh, like in production environment, in physical machines, uh, you can see this uh, driver package, uh, like how you can deploy for different laptops and desktops. So uh, this is the first step. Second step is we need to upload the OS image. And third one is uh, we need to create and distribute boot file. Boot file, uh, I have created a newer one in this. Uh, two boot files, like uh, one for x64 architecture and second one is for x86. Uh, for x86 architecture, two boot image already, uh, like uh, by default, provided by this SCCM. Uh, but sometimes those images are not working in some environment. And I think uh, you have already seen uh, most of us. Uh, I've already gone through this message many times when I tried to boot. Uh, I got this message preparing network connection and then machine got rebooted. So that problem can be solved by using or creating a new boot image file by using MDT. And for that, I've already created uh, another uh, video which uh, uh, link I'll share in my description. After boot image, then we need to create a task sequence, uh, which is uh, nothing but a step-by-step uh, -step, uh, information, or you can say step-by-step, uh, -step, uh, uh, we need to create a sequence of steps. Uh, you can say, uh, like uh, whatever I have already discussed, like drive, driver package, OS image, boot file, all this we need to uh, like attach somewhere. And for that, we require this task sequence. So we will add every steps in this task sequence. And then uh, we need to add the driver package as well. Whatever we create the package, we need to add it into the task sequence. And then before deploying it, we need to check the WDS and DSCP scope option. And then we can go for the deployment. So without wasting time, let's go ahead and start OSD process. So for OSD process, we have to go to our SCCM server. And in SCCM server, as you can see in the left side, these are the different options which we need to fill out. And then we can go ahead and the task sequence and deployment. So first option is uh, drivers. We need to import the driver. I've already downloaded one driver. Uh, let me show you. This one is the driver for the Hyper-V machine video driver, <clears throat> which I've already downloaded. Actually, we require .inf file for every driver to upload here. So uh, that I've already downloaded. And let's firstly, we need to import the driver here. We need a uh, network path, which I have kept on my AD server. I will show you that as well. Uh, my AD server is on 106. So when I click here, as I can see here, drivers, hyperwin, we need to give this path. And then we can select here any category. Till this uh, proceed, let me show you where I have created this folder on my AD server, where I've configured Active Directory and DSCP. So in this server, in my C drive, here, so I've created this folder here and shared it. So after that, it will be accessible from my SSM server. So let's say, yeah, it's uh, imported now, this driver, as you can see, I in the file up, uh, uploaded here. We can select any category here. I have given that uh, Hyper-V category because it's for Hyper-V virtual machine. So let's click next. Uh, now we need to create a package as well. Uh, what package will do? Uh, we have a source file, but I have already shown you that uh, INF file. So it will create a package and uh, pick up that source file and create one package, which will be distributed to the different distribution points. From that distribution points, client will pick up that INF file. So let's create a package. Per V display, we can give name, and then we can give according to our uh, whatever driver is it. Or so I've given this name. Here we have to give like where we can uh, we we have to put this path. Uh, sorry, package. 
So on the same server, under drivers, I have created one folder here. This one. So I can select it so that it can. Okay, so firstly, I think uh, because I've already tested one time, so firstly, you need to delete the content, whatever already placed. Yes, it's there, so we can delete it. Yeah. So now, when I try to add, it should pick now. So it's already picked up. Now, click next. We don't require to give any boot image here. Click next, click next, and uh, it will process this uh, <coughs> importing driver. So it will take around two to three minutes. Uh, let's pause this here so that uh, your time should not be wasted. Let me pause here. I'll be back once this will be completed. So as we can see, it's completed. So it has taken, uh, I think, maximum two minutes. So after that, because it's only one driver, so no, it has not taken much time, but if we have more drivers, then it will take much time here. Okay, so my package is ready. Now I need to distribute it to my distribution points. Here we need to select that uh, distribution point. This is my DB. Click next and finish. So when I refresh it, yeah, it's going there. So now the next step is I need to add the boot image. There are two options. One is operating system images and second one is operating system upgrade packages. So upgrade packages are related to when we are going to upgrade any machine from older version to newer version. Then we uh, can go ahead with the second option. But now we are uh, preparing our bare metal machine. So we are going to refresh it. So we are going for this first option. Here we need to add the PIM file. As you can see, it's already given that it should be PIM file. So I placed uh, that pin file there on the same path. Let me go there, here sources, and here we can see Windows 10 Pro. So once we click here, here we need to give any language, and it must be English United States. Name we can give like Windows 10 Pro version is 1903 click next and click next so my image has been uploaded here we can just distribute it now click next distribute content click next next and my distribute image has been distributed now when i refresh it i should see here so the next step is boot image which i have already created and for this uh, here you can see this create boot image using MDT. Once you install and integrate MDT with this SCCM, after that you will get this option. And uh, I've already created one other video in which I've already shown like how you can create this boot image. So you can uh, follow that and after that this will be created. And you will not get to that uh, preparing network connection uh, failure next time when you use this custom boot image. This is already distributed. So let's go ahead and create task sequence, create task sequence. So here different options are there. One is install an existing package, in, uh, image package. Uh, and second one is our built-in capture. We need, we can build and then uh, same machine we can capture by using this task sequence. Uh, this is upgrade operating system. For that we require this upgrade package. Uh, then autopilot is there. And the last one is custom task sequence. So let's, let's go with the first option. Windows 10 Pro. 19.03. Okay. So here we need to give that boot image that I select. I will select this custom boot image. Here we need to give that OS part. Uh, given partition fine. And configure the task sequence for use this boot bit locker. I'm not using it, so I'm just leaving it as blank. And next option is we have to give any password here, admin password, which is really important because. Uh, by default it will be disabled so always give this password uh, we can join this to domain my domain when you browse it it should automatically pick that domain name yes it has already been picked so here we need to give the OU as well so that uh, after creation or uh, you can see operating system deployment machine automatically add to this OU. and here we need to give any account which uh, by 
using that account that machine will be added to that uh, domain and to the OU so here I am going, going to give this SCCM admin this is my ID and password is whatever I am not going to reveal here okay so I have given here now we can also test it so that uh, we can see like after deployment we should not get any error related to the account okay so let's go ahead to the next step it's taking some time yeah next step is our configuration manager package it's already created and deployed uh, distribute i'm not going to capture any uh, data here so we can just ignore these settings because it's a new machine uh, we don't require to install any software update any application package if you want to add like office or adobe package so we can give here but right now i'm not going to give any in installation like application here and the last step is our summary the next is our creation of task sequence so we should not take uh, more than one minute for creation for creating this task sequence Uh, till the time it's creating let's check whatever uh, what else is required to deploy your OS so we have already achieved till fourth step so the next step is a driver package to the task sequence which I'll do after that and then we can go ahead for the deployment but before deployment we need to check that uh, WDS service is running and DSCP scope option is already configured so let me see it's still not created this task sequence yes it's created now okay so task sequence has been created here now we need to edit it so here are the different steps apply device driver we can create one more step here apply driver package for that uh, driver package i'm going to show you like how we can add here we need to select the package whatever we have created and here nothing need to select here we can give the name hyper v display and this is the most important here we can uh, add one query so that uh, our deployment should not be failed uh, like it should be applied to only virtual machines this driver so this is for virtual environment so I have given like this but if you are uh, having Dell laptop or desktop or any other ver uh, version of then you can add this query accordingly so you can also test it if you want yes. so just add it and that's it so other than that our setting is fine by operating system we can just check it everything is fine or not here yeah okay so let's apply it and okay now we can go ahead for the deployment part i'm just uh, uh, adding the deployment here like uh, but before deploying to the machine we will check that uh, dscp swap option which i've already told you so we'll add this to unknown computers collection it next it should be available and only variant pc you can give any schedule time if you want so okay so let's click next we can check this click next next and download content locally So my deployment has been created now as i've already said that before deployment we need to check this wds and dscp let's check firstly dscp scope is created and uh,
Okay, so this is my DSCP server and scope is everything everything has been configured boot server host name is my ssm server address and 67 port is my boot image this wds mvp.com this we have to give for osd so uh, let's check our wds now it's running as we can see here so everything is fine let's go ahead and uh, we create a new machine where we want to deploy it and also we'll show you like uh, what all option you need to select for creating this boot image here we need to give the path where we want to save this Click next generation one if we want to uh, for uf version like uh, uf based firmware we need to select this generation two which is uh, like for laptop desktop uh, deployment, this is really in needed that you should always create with generation 2. But because I'm using this Hyper-V and uh, through, for uh, uh, like uh, operating system deployment in Hyper-V, we require this generation 1. So I select this. Here we need to do the RAM. I'll give it 2 GB. Internet. And here we can get this. 60 GB is sufficient because it's only for testing purpose. Let's go ahead and select this network based installation. Finish. Okay, so my Hyper V machine is ready. Let's connect and start the deployment. Let's see if uh, it will pick. Okay, so it has picked. Uh, boot image now okay so my boot image has been loaded now I'll go to the next step which we have already seen that very network connection and now I should get this password option I'm not given here in pixie server so this is my task sequence let's select it and now it will take around 15 to 20 minutes for a whole building process so I'm pausing this video so we'll come back once this completed so let's check the progress so it's still applying the image so it will take some more time so stay here uh, we'll get back once this completed okay so yeah my machine is ready now it's been built so let's log in into here you can use any id uh, domain id as well as local id so let's use my domain id okay so i'm able to log in now as you can see my screen this is the new windows 10 machine which i have just built now so let me check name and domain and everything. So as you can see that uh, display driver successfully applied. That's why uh, this pixels are good. It's already in the domain, and this is the configuration Windows 10 Pro. Okay, so I hope you like this video, and uh, it uh, should be really informative for you. And if you want that, uh, I'll share some more informative informative video in future. Please uh, like this video and subscribe my channel uh, so that uh, I'll make some more videos for you. Thank you. Thank you for watching my video. Thank you so much.